a very, very old Paphia Pedalum, at least old in my collection, and she was a rescue from a garden center, so she's probably older than the four years that I have had her, because even at the garden center, she was in bloom, and she is in bloom again. However, in the past years, she hasn't been performing. I've had three blooms out of the three directions of growth in the past years. She's gone from three blooms to two blooms to one bloom. That is because I have not repotted her from the moment I actually got her, but I'm not repotting her today. First of all, today, we're just gonna clean her up and make her look a little pretty. We'll do our best, given the circumstances. Let's see how far we get. Now, with any slipper orchid, there are directions of growth. And the beauty about this is that the old growths will hold on and stay active for the longest time ever. It takes forever for the leaves to drop. And ideally, yeah, you might say, why don't you cut this off? Well, I was waiting to do the video, but also I like the fact that the orchid is taking it off and absorbing it all by herself. I prefer to do that, no harm, no foul. I'm not growing for shows. However, the time has come to have a little bit of a look-see and get her cleaned up and see what we're up against. And I'm starting with little sheaths around the base of actual growths that are still okay. They're old, but they're not the blooming ones, but we can clean up around the base there because Especially during cold temperatures, it's good to get rid of something that could go a little bit soft and probably cause issues, you know, rot around the base and we don't want that. So that came from the fan right here, which did not bloom for me last year. However, its new lead is the one currently in bloom. And then you can date back the growths that are affected and really dying back. So. We have the growth of 2020 right here, and it bloomed, okay? Now this one is spent, but it produced another growth right here. This is the growth of 2021. It did not bloom. Then we have the growth of 2022, which is right here, which is blooming. And on the bottom, we've already got the growth starting of 2023, which is awesome. You see there's also another kind of a yellowing leaf here with some serious spotting. This was a problem from 2022 when I had spider mites. Many, many leaves are affected. You'll see that all throughout. It repeats itself. Unfortunately, until the growths do not come off or die off or get cleaned off, <laughs> those blemishes will stay. I always comfort myself in the fact that I am not growing for shows. And with that, I don't feel so bad. Anyway, back to the cleaning. I am going to take off this back growth because even though I would like this leaf to be absorbed all by itself, let the orchid do that. Seeing as she is growing her new growths already, I think we can take the whole thing off. That is optional. And depending on what I find as I go through, all I'm doing is very, very easily ripping off Sounds harsh, but they come off relatively easy when they're in this stage of desiccation at the base. So you can go in and not be timid about it. And you see I have some microfibers here. That is because sometimes slipper orchids will raise themselves out of the pot as the roots grow. And then, of course, the roots are at surface level. Don't want them to dry out in my dry climate. So I wrap little bits of microfiber around the base of the new fans to be able to protect the roots. Case in point is right here. Let me make sure that I've got that in shot. There you can see a fuzzy, fuzzy root. And that was where the microfiber was placed over the top. And I will be reinstating the status quo here once I'm done cleaning her up. The microfiber stays damp. Sorry about the jiggle, it stays damp. Not at all times, but you know, intermittently, I just don't want that root to fail. Let's get back to our initial growth. Make sure that we've got everything and see if I want to take that out. So yeah, this looks radical, but it's relatively easy to do. Very, very old growths in the back here that have been trimmed over the years. Sometimes they pop off relatively easily and I like to try and get them off. 
but this one's pretty solid. So until I don't do a repot on this orchid, I'm going to leave it. And this also gives me insight into the next direction of growth, which is looking a little bit pathetic. Again, we have this lead in the back. We had blooming, we had blooming, we've had no blooms, and now it is growing two new growths. So I'm hoping to reestablish that status quo when I get to repot her. But you see the yellowing leaves at the base? I like to take them off because they impede root growth. So there's a little bit of a spider web, that's okay. I get spiders in my pots, especially during the winter. The grow space is, after all, more comfy, cozy than outdoors. So my spiders come in for the winter <laughs> and then they stick around in the pots for the duration of the winter. Eventually they leave. You see, there's nothing wrong with this, but it feels, I can't show you, but it feels a little bit wet. Even though this is on an older lead, older fan, it could be an issue down the line and we don't want that. In the meantime, we have uncovered on this single back lead right here, another growth by taking that sheath off, that leaf, sorry, off. Here's another one. Now, if that had stayed on, it is possible that the wetness at the base could cause some issues and we don't want that. The fact that this one is desiccating at the center, that is not normal. Usually it's the outer leaves of older fans that will desiccate first. So this has something to do, maybe there's an issue in the middle. Maybe it was just the spider mite treatment that took this leaf off. And you see how quickly that happened. You just split the leaf down the middle to get ahead of the game and you can pull it off. Now I didn't get all of it, which is unfortunate but at least there may be some more air around the base in there. I have my snips if I need them. So far, the leaves are coming off pretty easily, so I'm not going to be cutting, per se, unless I really, really need to. And see how this leaf right here... Huh, we've got the new growth there, and we've got some roots coming there. Yeah, this orchid is desperately in need of a repot, so... To do it safely, split the leaf down the middle, pull it apart. You don't want to be popping off any new growths, any new fans. And then just take it off, going with the direction of growth, as in not pulling this way. You want to take it where it comes from and then pop it off at the base. Now we've beautifully exposed that side of the new fan there, that's awesome. That'll give us a little bit more control when it comes to the roots. Now, here's where I like to take off a little bit more at the base, simply because of the new root growth. I don't want it going aerial, being caught up in there. There is no new root growth just yet. There may be a little nubbin right down in here, but I don't want that to fail if it is a nubbin. It's a little bit difficult in the early stages to identify new roots or new fans. I'm assuming it's a new root that has failed because all the fans down here have already established themselves and proving themselves to be new fans. Now, I have one more leaf in the back here and we've got some some critters. A uh, moth. Oh, a moth nest with moth eggs. Don't like that at all. Moths turn to larvae before they turn to moths. And I do have moth larvae issues in my climate here in southern Spain. And these may already be on their way doing their, the worst in my growth space. Having seen that, I now know to be vigilant for future reference, looking around my growth space, making sure that no larvae are going for other orchids. Clearly, they have not attacked this orchid which is great, but uh, yeah. Now, I was expecting to hmm, take this off as well, or it can stay. I'm going to let it stay. I've changed my mind. That is why I like to work from the bottom up, because if I change my mind, then I don't feel so bad. I cannot put a leaf that I've cut off back, but working from the worst to the front 
gives you a better insight as to how much you really want to take off. Now, when it comes to cleaning paths, obviously, <clears throat> if you've got ideal temperatures, then by all means, make sure that the leaves are nice and dust free. In my case, I'm not going to do that because I don't have ideal temperatures and I don't want water or any kind of residual moisture on the leaves. So for the time being, they will stay dusty. Now here, a little bit more of a bloom intermission. Gorgeous. Now here I have this leaf. It is unsightly. Let's see if I can get rid of that. That's just spider mite damage. It's not going to do anything here nor there. It's not adding. But if we take it away, if we can, because it's fresh, <laughs> it's not that easy. So I take the snips and cut a line down the middle of the sheath. And then I pull right in the direction of that part of the leaf joint and left in the direction, opposite direction of that leaf joint. Now, there's still a little bit left down there. I want to be pedantic. I don't want to feel that my job is done just with that dead root. Might as well take that out. Sorry if my chubby hand is in the way there, but I do not want these remnants down here right at the base of a new fan. Let's see. Oh, but it's proving stubborn because it's fresh. So we'll just snip it back into a smaller size even, and then we can pull it out relatively easily. And basically, because I'm not cleaning the leaves, that would be it with me cleaning a slipper orchid. The repot will happen when she's finished blooming. Now, it doesn't mean to say that I can't repot her. Now slipper orchids are awesome, even if it were blooming or in spike and you felt the need to repot a slipper orchid, then go ahead and do so. They don't care. I just say, why? Why not just wait? Because you can repot a slipper orchid at any point, enjoy the blooms. There's a bit of a tidy up. She already looks so much better than she did when we started. That is good enough for me now. At least her bloom can sparkle without looking all nasty. Pending one thing, a wet microfiber, which we are going to place once again over the surface of the root right there. We can move a bit of the leca away. The microfiber is just wet with beautiful fresh rainwater because we've had a lot of it recently, like a lot. I don't need to double up because I see another root on the surface right here. And again, this is only temporary until such a time that I can repot the orchid. But that at least stops light getting to that root, maintains its health. We're going to need it eventually. We clear the clutter away. End result. Ta-da! So much better. And that went relatively quickly. And that is how it is supposed to be. Yes, it's not nice looking at leaves getting old and you want to get rid of them as they yellow. But you know what? There's no wound on a dry leaf. The minute you start cutting leaves that are somewhat fresh like I did previously, I have created a wound. I'd like to avoid that as best as possible. Anyway, any questions, let me know. This is a large slipper orchid, so that was easy, also easy to demonstrate. If you have any concerns about smaller slipper orchids, you're not entirely sure, or you just need a confidence boost, let me know in the comments and we can talk you through it step by step. I appreciate your time. Thank you so very much for watching the video. Have yourself a beautiful day on that one condition, though, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.